Right. So, Tamak had a question about um, doing something clever with a photograph and incorporating a photograph into a shape. So, I'm just going to um, jump into a place onto a site where I like to download photographs. One, it's called unsplash.com. So you can go and find all kinds of great photography here and um, and it's recommended you credit the photographer that you can use use these images however you'd like royalty free. Uh, so let's see what kind of image do I want? I'm good I'm seeing some pretty good plant images here maybe. Maybe I want something like a nature image. I don't know. I'm just going to type in nature. And all kinds of landscapes and things you can... Images that will, might give me some interesting textures, perhaps. Okay. Let's say I wanted to try, um, well, this will probably go well with my Bright Bloom graphics theme. So, okay, this one is by Aaron Burden. So I can click the, I can hover over it, and then there's a down, down arrow I can click on. And then it downloads it, and it says, say thanks, give a shout out to Aaron Burden on social media, or copy the text below to attribute. So I can put, like if I, um, on my website somewhere, I could put photo used by Aaron, Aaron Burden or something like that, if I wanted to. Um, I'm just going to. Okay, so that's the photo. It downloaded to my download, so I'm going to go get it on my downloads. And there it is, and it has his name to remind me to credit him. And then I can go to my new finder window here and find my folder for the class. And I'm just going to put it in my images folder in there. Okay, so now I've a photo to work with and then I'm going to jump into Illustrator and find that header that I set up for <clears throat> for my animation that's connected to um, After Effects. I've got After Effects open already. I'm going to close this window that's popping up here. I'll close that. You can also go into Open Project from this window or New Project from this window, but if you close it, you'll have After Effects in the background here. You can just go File, and I can open my project, or maybe I have it here in Recent Projects. And there it is. My animated header. So, in this animation, so far, what do I have going on? I've got this stuff going on here. And, and Tenmog had an idea. What if we put a photo image inside of this bar? What would that look like and how do we do it? So I'm going to go into, I'm opening, I've got Illustrator open now. So I'm going to go here, file to open, just open my, in my folder for this class my header for animation. That's the one that's connected to After Effects. So whatever I do here should update in After Effects. If I want them to all look consistent, that's a good thing. Okay, so let's see how we might put a photo, have a photo show inside of a shape. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go File, and place to bring the photo in. Find it from images. And there's the sunflower image there. And I want to make sure link is not checked because I like 
I want my photo embedded here and I'm just gonna click place and then click to drop it in it's huge I can scale it down holding shift as I'm dragging so that I don't distort the proportions of the image oops it's nice and big let's just scale it down I can also scale it down up here with width and height or or here and like if I in the in the properties in the transform section of properties I can click um, this chain link on and then I could do okay well it's like width is over 2000 so I could say okay what if the width was 1000 and then press return then it's a lot smaller quicker so or but if, if I just drag on it then you get it let me zoom out with command minus kind of stretch it out I want it a little bigger okay so to do this I need the um, I need the photo to be under the shape that I want to cut the photo into. So I'm going to do that by, let me check what where this back bar is. It's on the layer, in the layers somewhere. Let's see, there it is. So I open up the layer panel here and then I can see where the back bar is. It's, it's at the bottom, it's the bottom layer here. And the um, the image went on this top layer here so what I want what I need to do is I need to select the image and I could drag it like I did before but that's a kind of a long way to drag now that I have all these layers so I could just simply select the image which is on the layer that I labeled logo and I can cut that image I can go edit cut or command X on a Mac, C control X on Windows, and then I can highlight the layer I want it to go to, this bottom layer here that I named back bar, and then I can paste, edit, paste, or paste in place if I want to go to the exact same position on that layer paste in place which is shift command V or that would be shift control V on Windows so now it's on the back bar layer but I need the back bar to be in front of it so let me open up that layer and I can drag the image under the shape so the shape is is now in front of the image <clears throat> and then you just need to select the shape that you want to cut the image into and then by clicking with the selection tool and then you can hold shift and shift click the image so now they're both okay remember to mute yourselves if you've got background stuff going on okay so um <clears throat> Oh, we've got background sound. Let's mute that. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, Emily's here. Okay. Hi, Emily. Get you. Make sure to sign in in chat. Okay, so I've got two things selected now, right? What two things do I have selected? The shape. Well, now I deselected the shape on top, the the rectangle, and then I'm holding shift and shift clicking the image. The two things are selected, and that's indicated by the fact that we've both of those items are here within this this layer, and they are both targeted. You see the target, the doubled circles, and they both have these little indicators. This box here that's lit up 
is on the top level of the layer that just indicates that there are items or objects selected on this layer both of these these objects are selected we're ready to make a clipping mask so to make a clipping mask you can simply right click over the selection and choose make clipping mask or you can go up to object clipping mask make or there's a shortcut there on a mac it's command 7 so on windows it's what probably control 7 right so you could just right click make clipping mask if you like and now the photo is inside of the shape okay, good deal yeah so then I can save that and once that's saved and the shape will lose its its color so if I still wanted the color of the bar to be part of it I could always release the clipping mask so now it's a clip group like that and it, if you flip open the clip group it will still have the rectangle but the rectangle no longer has its color the rectangle is clipping the image now <laughs> if I want to release it I could select it right click and choose release clipping mask or I could go object clipping mask release and they're released again and now the rectangle is there but it doesn't have its color what I could do if I want to still use the color is let me put the color back on this rectangle the color is still stored here in the color button so I can click that while I have that selected and then what I could do is I could copy and paste this rectangle in front so I could select it and go edit copy or command C control C on Windows and then edit paste in front that would be command F or control F for Windows so now I've got two rectangles one two stacked right on top of each other so for the clipping mask, I just need the one that is above the, um, either one will work. I could select either one of these rectangles to make a clipping mask. That's, and you can also use your layer panel as a remote control. See this layer is flipped open to reveal the objects on this layer. And I can target select by clicking on the circles for each object so for a clipping mask you just need to select one shape and then you need to select the image that you want to cut the shape into that you want to clip the image with so I selected the rectangle I'm going to hold shift and select the image so those two items are selected the rectangle that's going to cut cut into the shape of the image and the image that's going to be cut those two are selected and then I can make the clipping mask command 7 so the photo <clears throat> hit away into the shape and I still have this rectangle though on top that's not affected so I can turn it off and on and you can see there it is playing peekaboo I'm turning it off and on with the visibility eyeball button I can select this rectangle now and I can I can bring down the opacity properties go to properties and play with the opacity controls here and then have the photo kind of more subtly showing through and still using the colors of my brand with that rectangle just uh, with adjusting opacity so it's a little more subtle or I could let's say I bring the opacity up another way to play with opacity is if you click on the word opacity here in this appearance section of the properties panel this will pop out the transparency panel where you have even more options so um, this this drop down is a blending mode drop down and blending modes will do different things um, in terms of blending one color with with other colors underneath so you can experiment with different blending modes and it will create different interactions between the colors and different levels of 
of opacity and, and transparency. So I'm going to click darken and we just see how that color is interacting multiplies. Usually these are the darker. And so it's the color is doing it, creating different effects with the photograph now, the color on top. So that's lighten. So you might find a certain effect that you can create with um, <clears throat> the color in a shape and how it interacts with the colors in a photograph. I kind of like that one. That's green. That kind of works with my brand colors with the yellows and the greens showing. But then there's color dodge and then there's overlay and then there's all of these are fun to just play with and experiment with and see what they do. Ooh, I like that too. That's nice. That's different. So it's hard to choose. Do I want different or do I want um, I'm going to go back to what it was before that I liked. What was it? Lighten or screen? It was screen. I think screen might work better with my, my brand. Okay, so I'm going to go with that and then I save it and then let's see how it updates in After Effects. Let's see how it works. Hopefully it does. Uh-oh. We are having an issue. So some things you can see like um, just changing the, doing something simple like just changing the color of something is gonna work with after with updating with After Effects. But um, because I actually have a new photograph in there, I guess it didn't take it, unfortunately. Hmm. So in that case, I'd have to re-import the layer. You guys think it's worth it or should I just try to delete the photograph and see if it reverts? Or do you want to see me try to make it work with the photo? I'm trying to, trying to make it work. Try to make it work? Still, okay. yeah, Problem so solved. The photos would be relatively easy. Yeah, so I think trying what I have, what I time. might have to do is uh, re-import that, that back bar layer. Because that's the layer that, that I added the photo to. Is this layer is the back bar layer. Now I've added a bunch of stuff into this layer. It was it was just a simple shape. Now it's got the photo. So, um, okay. So what I need to do is see if I can right click it and I could choose maybe replace footage file. And then I go to the header and it's just import as is grayed out. Let's see if I click open what happens. And then I choose layer and then I choose um, the back bar and then I'll do it uh, layer size as the dimensions and okay. Let's see. Hmm, it's still not, not working. Okay, let's see if there's another. What I probably have to do is I have to re-import it. Then if it's not gonna go with, maybe reload footage, let's see. So I'm selecting back bar layer, right click, reload footage. Let's see if it comes in. Nope, it's not happy. So what I have to do is I have to try importing it again. So file, import file. And then I'll go choose the, the Illustrator file and import. This time I'm importing as footage because I don't want to reload. I don't want to import everything again, just that layer. So I can go import as footage, open, and then I'm going to choose the layer and choose the back bar layer and bring it in layer size and OK. 
So now I have two back bars. Let's see if I double click on this one. This is the one with the photo. And well, they both have the photo. When I'm double clicking on both of them, they're showing the photo. But when I, so this is just, when you double click on a footage item, it will show up in the footage panel. But now the footage panel is in front of the composition panel, so I could swap between them. And maybe if I save this and I quit or I close it, close project, and then I open it again, open recent. See, that back bar layer is all messed up now. Okay, back bar. It's still got its animation. It's just not displaying. So then I'm going to have to just drag this layer in because these layers are working. So there it is. It's just that this layer went out of commission here. So I had to drag in the new one. And now I have two, so I, I don't think I need two because they were both the same. So I could delete one tr by clicking the trash. Yeah, delete. Okay, let's try dragging this in again. This one in. Okay, so then I just need to position it where it was supposed to be so I can let me bring up position and it was supposed to be let me put everything together I think that's where it was kind of there let's well let's look let's compare to what it was supposed to look like here that's how it's supposed to look so in Illustrator and so it needs to be a little bit higher like that kind of underlining the bright bro bright bloom graphics so that's the position I want it to end up as and and then this is the back bar that went out of commission I'm gonna just press P to bring up my position keyframes and I could select my all my, my position keyframes by selecting the word position here and then I could copy the keyframes like edit uh, copy or command C and then I can put my playhead here lined up with the first keyframe select the back bar that does does not have the keyframes and I should be able to hit command V to paste so now it should have wait a minute oh except it to, except oh it might have something to do with it not being 3d well, I only did a few layers 3D, so that's weird. Let me undo that. Undo because as soon as I pasted the animation, it um, it's having some problems. So I'm going to delete this one completely, this back bar, and I'm just going to redo the animation. So I'm, I want to work backwards. So I want it to end up like this So at a certain point. So I'll have it... I'll go here is where I want it to end up. So I put my playhead where I want where I want it to end up. I click the stopwatch to initialize keyframing. I move the playhead backwards in time. And then I'm gonna just adjust the position value along the x-axis to move it like it's like it's moving in from the side. So it's out 
all outside of frame and then it comes in like that. Okay. There it is with the photo. Good, good idea, Temok. It just um, can take some some reworking for some things if you if you make dra changes that are too drastic in Illustrator, like I just did. Uh, it just took some troubleshooting there, and I had to re keyframe, unfortunately. But a, a lot of things you can just change and then they update in After Effects beautifully. Not everything though, as you can see. Okay. Okay. So, but that's a nice idea to integrate a photograph into, into it. I like it. Okay. Um, I got a bunch of messages in chat. I didn't get to see them yet. Let's see, six messages in chat. All right, who's sending me messages here? Um, so Tracy's saying the logo and header is completely different from my business card and website. And they just specialize in computer repair. Oh, you are just talking about the connections discussion, probably use connections. Yeah, okay, very good. That's a good um, rebranding there, Tracy. Okay, okay, so let's wrap this animation up and then we'll get into, so I was showing you kind of about 3D and moving things kind of forward towards you in 3D space. And um, the goal in wrapping up the animation um, is you want everything to either leave the frame. You want everything, you know, everything could just fade out to nothing or it can move out of the frame. Or another clever way to create an animated header is um, to have, like if you had your logo, if you had imagery showing at the beginning, like mine, everything's clear and an and empty space at the beginning. I like that for a clear beginning. But if you didn't have an empty space at the beginning, one thing you could do is have the first frame match the last frame and then your animation would play seamlessly on a loop if you set it up for playing on a loop when you make a GIF animation. So that's an option. Mine I'm gonna try to make everything go away at some point. So I could have things kind of move out, move back where they came from or fade out. So I had some things moving in 3D space. Um, I also wanted to show you the uh, the text animator. To get back into the text animator, I wanted to show you one other option that you have for using the text animator. So the text animator is on my After Effects text layer where I have the words writing themselves out. Let me just zoom in here. Zoom in a little more. Move around here. So, um, inside of my text layer, if I open that up, remember we in the text layer you have text options and you have transform options. And I and I added a text animator by clicking on this animate button. If I open up the text options, you'll see now I have this animator one. That's my text animator. And on the animator one, I could, um, I could add different options for animation by using the add button. I could also click on either the add button or you could do this from the animate button. You can check enable per character 3D. I'm gonna do it from the add button since I already have the animator there. Enable per character 3D. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to move my 
characters in 3D space. So, uh oh, I just noticed I have my renderer set up set up wrong for this because I don't want to use true 3D animation where you can extrude objects. Um, so I need to fix that. That's something I left on from when I was teaching After Effects and we were getting into some more advanced stuff. So chances are yours is not going to be set up this way. I need to f change that this setting. So I'm going to go to composition and composition settings. And I want to set the 3D renderer not to work with Cinema 4D. That's what, that's what we do in our 3D animation class when we really, we really get into 3D animation and 3D modeling. I just want to do classic 3D. So I'm switching this to classic 3D. And it should render a lot faster and play back faster using classic 3D. So I'm switching back to classic 3D. Okay, we want classic. Okay, so now, yeah, geometry options is grayed out because that's something that's more for advanced, more advanced 3D animation for actually creating 3D objects in After Effects. We're going to learn, you learn that in, when you take the second part of the After Effects, the full After Effects class. Okay, but here we want to keep it pretty streamlined and clean and just focus on doing motion graphics using 2D graphics and being able to move them and rotate them in 3D space. That's what we're doing here and that's when you would use classic 3D rendering. So Animator 1 uh, is now set up. If I open up Animator 1 here I've keyframed the start bracket and um, I have uh, I've added position and now because I switched this to enable per character 3D now I not only have the ability to move my characters um, along the x-axis and the y-axis but there's also the z-axis here so it looks like each of my characters are moving in from the bottom up. I could adjust the position along the z-axis by dragging on this number here to make it look like the characters are maybe more forward. Maybe bring them back here this way. Kind of got to go back and forth between adjusting X and Z and Y to position the characters. So now they should look like maybe they're kind of falling into place more. Let's do this, do more. There. See how I'm maneuvering the text so it looks like it is coming towards us. Okay, so now it's going to look like it's really falling from Falling, each character should look like each one is falling from from space down onto one after another. If I want that to go slower, I can space out the keyframes. Why is it, it doesn't, it's not transitioning too well. Let's see if I need to go to advanced, make sure smoothness is up. I guess it's just going so fast, but it still looks kind of like a typewriter effect. Maybe if I adjust, let me see, position, maybe bring this down just a little bit. Let's see what it will look like. Why does it, it's weird. I guess they are, it's, 
is not transitioning very smoothly. That's strange. Here, well, let's just go through it again. If I want to delete the animator, I can click animator one and press delete. And now there's no animator. And, but the text is still um, set to enable per character 3D. That's what those little cubes are um, in, uh, in the 3D switch box. Because if I go to, if I click on animate, Notice enable per character 3D is checked on and then I can choose position and then I have the X, Y, and Z. I think it, it will work better this way that I'm doing it over because now I can... So I'm positioning, I want to position the characters in 3D space looking like they are outside of the frame not not part way in not like that because you don't want it to start like it's showing inside you want it to look like it's it's all the way out and and out of frame okay so now it's moved out of frame I've moved I've moved the text forward in position on the animator. And then if I open up the range selector, if I select the start bracket, um, the start bracket would be, as I adjust the start bracket from zero to 100, it should, the start bracket should be moving through the text, transitioning it gradually a one by one from beginning to end pulling it back to its original position and that's what's creating the animation so I'm gonna just keyframe start when I went whenever I want that to come in so right after bright bloom graphics sits down then that's where I want to start I put the playhead there I click the stopwatch to initialize keyframing I move the playhead forward a duration of time I want it to take for the start bracket to transition each character one by one to its original position and that's what creates the animation effect of the letters kind of falling into place in 3D space. And if I wanted to add some rotation to that, let's see what that'll look like. If I go to Animator 1, Range Selector, I can click the Add button, choose Rotation. Let's try Rotation here. And then I can have, I can adjust the rotation values. Maybe I want it to spin um, two times along the x-axis and one time along the y-axis. And then let's see if that does anything. Now you can kind of see, let me zoom in here. When I zoom in, it's kind of pixelated looking, but I don't know if you can kind of tell, but the, can you kind of see the letters kind of rolling in? as I'm scrubbing through. And it might look cool to have opacity on them so that they transition from transparent to, to, to opaque. So I could go to that animator and click Add, Property, choose Opacity. You could even do Blur if you want. I'll try Opacity and bring down the opacity all the way so that each letter kind of looks transparent as it's coming in, which is kind of a nice effect. But maybe that's going a little fast so I can spread out the keyframes to make it go slower. Maybe a little blur on, on the letters would be cool so I could do, let's do add, property, blur, and then and then um, 
I'll just do blur along the uh, x-axis. So I'll unclick the chain link and then blur it out a little bit. Just a little. Okay, so now each the letters are spelling spelling out my tagline. And then I want everything to go away. So what do I need to do next? Maybe I'll have that back bar move out at a certain point. So after after where vision comes to life. Maybe that's going a little too slow. You can always bring up your keyframing on any layer by selecting the layer and pressing U and it'll bring up any property that you've keyframed. So now it's just bringing up the range selector. The start property is what I've keyframed on the text layer. So I can just adjust the keyframes closer together so it goes faster. A rule of thumb for text is that you want to be able to read it to yourself twice in order to ensure that the viewer is going to be able to take it in. So I want to say bright bloom graphics, bright bloom gra graphics, where vision comes to life, where vision comes to life. Okay, that's probably good. Okay, so at maybe at this point, then we have the um, where vision comes to life can go away, and I could uh, make just make it go backwards on the same range selector. If I click the, I could click the. Um, add remove keyframe button just to hold it in position for this duration of time or how, however I long however long I want it to take to be able to read it where vision comes to life where vision comes to life okay maybe a little sooner and then it can go away right about here it can go backwards so then I can make the start value go all the way back to zero so the letters go back and it goes away. And then we need the um, the bar to go away. We need the lines to go away. Let's see how the lines are going to go away. Things could just disappear. Like It could be as simple as you select something like the little circles. Select the little circles. Press T to bring up opacity, and then I can have things fade out, like at a certain point, I can just click the stopwatch that holds the 100% opacity, and I can move my playhead over and then bring the opacity down to, to zero on those. I could do that on a lot of things. They could everything could just fade out. That's a that's a simple way to do it. Like if I wanted a whole bunch of layers just to fade out at a certain point, I could just select all these layers here from big circles all the way up to end curve and press T and then click the stopwatch. All these layers are selected so they all get uh, activated together. So they all have a, an opacity keyframe and then I can move my playhead forward a duration in time and then adjust opacity down to zero on any one of these. That's just a quick way, but it might be kind of a boring way if everything just fades out. That's kind of boring, but, but it works. Um, or I could be thinking, okay, how do I want all these things to end? Um, do I want, maybe I want the back bar to just move back where it came from so it came in like that and then it can move out so I can at a certain point decide when is it going to move out right here how about I put my playhead here and then I click 
to add a keyframe to hold that position from the last keyframe and then I move my playhead forward when I want it to move out and then I have it go back so I adjust it along um, X. I'm just dragging on the X value back to the left, to the left, where it came from. Okay, so it goes out and then maybe this last spiral can just spiral on out at a certain point. This spiral here, where is that big, is it called big spiral? This spiral here. Um, okay, I'm going to press U on it to bring up what I keyframed. So I keyframed on big spiral position and rotation so I can hold the position and rotation at this point here by clicking the add keyframe, add keyframe, and then going, and then it can move out like right about here. It can, can go out maybe. See, so which, which way is it going to go out? Maybe it's going to go out this way. So I can just adjust the position by dragging and maybe I make it curve by dragging on the handle. So it kind of goes on a curve. So it's going to move out on a curve, but then maybe I also want it to rotate. So I want it to rotate a certain number of times. So I move the plate to the end of where I want it to rotate and it was rotating four times. I can make it rotate eight times to add more four more times there and it should be rotating out there it is rotating out that's fun and then everything else just faded out and I could have done more interesting things with the the other stuff have them like rotate spinning out moving out and maybe maybe they do start so I could take like these let's see little circles here where are my little circles? Let's see, I'm going to turn off the visibility on little circles. Oh, there they are. Little circles. I could have them spinning or something or moving. Little circles, I could press U to bring up the keyframing. So I did position on little circles. I could add a keyframe to start them moving again and then adjust their position so that they start moving as they're fading out maybe. They're, see they're fading out but they could be moving out too. Moving up or sorry this is side to side. Moving to the side or up so something happens. They're moving out. Maybe space that out longer. So circles start moving. Maybe they maybe they spin too. So I can bring up rotation with Shift R. Click the stopwatch, and they could be kind of turning as they're. I could just adjust the angle maybe so they're kind of spinning or rotating as they're moving. Maybe space that out a little bit. So as they're moving out, they're they're twisting and then they and then they fade out. Just so there's some maybe some interesting movement going on as things are happening there. Just makes it a little more interesting. But the main goal is you want to do it? We can, I'm going to do another one that's probably much more simple. So the main goal is to have everything for a logo animation. You have your elements come together to form your layout for your header. And then you can have them move away or or you could have them just hold. Like they don't all have to move away. They could just, the goal could be for them to hold. It's up to you. Like it could be for them to come to, into place and hold and that's it, right?
because you ultimately you you probably want it to just just hold and keep it simple so here I'll make another version let me save this and I could always duplicate let me just duplicate this so this is the composition that's open on the timeline this is the project that I just created I could make an alternate version by selecting it and using command D to duplicate and now I have a number two animation I can just I'm gonna press return you can press return to rename your anything in After Effects if you select it and press return then you can rename it so I could say animation v2 for version 2 and this one animation version 2 maybe I don't want to have everything leave the frame maybe I just want to have it hold in into a position and a quick way to close everything is to select your layer and you can press um, command tilde the accent mark key that's under the escape key or it, or you could use control tilde it does the same thing control tilde or accent mark key that's under the space bar you can select multiple layers click on one hold shift click on the other and control tilde accent mark key so it just makes everything compact you can also select layers or a layer and control tilde to expand all the properties or control tilde to collapse so everything's collapsed and easy to work with then so what if I wanted everything to just hold in position at a certain point maybe after it spells out where vision comes to life right about here then maybe I want things to just hold there so what do I do um, then I can actually select all of these layers I'm gonna hold click on the top hold shift click on the bottom and I can press U to reveal anything that I keyframed and then at this point maybe I want the flower to be scaled back to the flower I want it to be scaled back to 100 and and then and let's see 100% is it and maybe I don't want 3D for this layer or this layer actually I'll um, yeah so maybe I'll just let me just make it back to 100 and the position I want it to be positioned let me delete I'm gonna delete these keyframes so it goes back to being positioned where it was there so it'll just kind of stay in place there and then everything else I just want to kind of hold in place so what's kind of going everywhere so instead of everything going everywhere um, I could probably just um, I'm going to select all the layers and press P to bring up all the positions and just add a keyframe for all those layers to hold position where everything is and then um, and then I'll just delete the keyframes after that point by dragging I dragged a box over all those keyframes and I'm going to delete and then so now things are staying in place there's still rotation happening and there is there's stuff that gets that disappears so 
I can select all my layers and if I don't want the opacity at change at the end I'll just press T and remove all these opacity keyframes and then on the spiral maybe I want it to sit still and not the big spiral is uh, rotating so I'll bring up rotation on it and say no I don't want you to rotate here so I'm going to remove that end rotation keyframe delete that so now it should just kind of stay there so now everything is just staying oh except the circles are still going so we'll go to the circles little circles bring up rotation get rid of the rotation on these circles the just delete there so this is a version where everything stays except oh my text here my text animator I'm gonna press U and delete these last two keyframes so that it's not going to so it's gonna just keep my tagline there so that's another version that you you might want to have your everything come together do a little dance or not or maybe just come together maybe I don't like the rotate rotating and scaling on the logo so I take this logo here and I'm gonna press S I can get rid of all the scaling keyframes I'll just click the stopwatch so now it should just just come in and not scale it's kind of bouncing a little bit so that's a position thing it looks like position is getting a little crazy so my position is kind of sliding so I'm going to just delete this keyframe so that it just comes in and sticks in one place I guess this the spinning is is kind of fun I'll, I'll keep it spinning and then it stops then everything stops in place in a very specific planned out layout except except this little circle here where is this little circle I'm gonna press P I think I don't like that keyframe on that the circles I want them to just come into place and stay there and do a very specific location so that's that's another version that's version two so I have a few versions okay so now to make my animation for my header I think I'm gonna go with version two I think I like that better although I don't know it's hard to it's hard to decide do I want a header where everything comes together and then moves out and then it can play on a loop maybe or do I want it to be a header that my version 2 where everything comes together and stays there and then the viewer can just sort of actually I don't like the way this spiral let me press P on my position I don't like how it shifts there so I'm going to delete that I don't need that it rotates yeah actually I don't think I need this position keyframe either so I just have it coming in and staying in one place so from point A to point B I don't have it moving anywhere else that's better than you know you don't want to have your objects looking like they don't know their place on stage right when you are choreographing a dance you have your all your dancers come together in a certain formation and they know where they're supposed to be right you don't want to have the dancer who's confused and like moving all over the place so think of it as if you're choreographing a dance and you have every everybody moves into a certain formation for a purpose and then they may move out in a certain way and everything kind of unfolds and and leaves the stage one after the other or everything disappears all at once or everything just stays in formation like that till the end so that's those are different options for 
um, different plans for what you might do with your animation. Okay, so let's say I use this one. So the one that I use um, in order to, to render it, to make it into a video, or not a video, but well, it's going to be an animated GIF. So I need to select the one that I'm going to use. The one that I'm going to use is the one that is um, active in the timeline, the one that's underlined. That's version 2 right now. See the one behind? It's just tab behind. It's it's not, now it's active because I clicked on it. So this is this is the, the other version that has the 3D animation. Which one do you guys vote for? The one with the 3D animation where everything comes in and then leaves? And that'll play, that I could set up to play on a loop. Or the one that is, everything is just kind of coming in. I like the, I like the flower going in a circle. Spinning? Or, yeah, twirling. I like that. Okay, well let's try version two then. Okay, so version two is the one that's active, that's displaying in the composition panel, so that's the one I'm going to do. I can close the other one by clicking the X, so it's just one in the timeline when I do this. And you have to render it out in order to get it to um, be in WordPress. And, and what I have to do is I need to go to composition, and I need to choose um, pre-render. Because pre-render is pre-render is what I need to choose for the purposes of making a GIF animation. Because I'm gonna need to open it in Photoshop, and so it's it's kind of it's keeping it in its raw format at its highest quality because it's gonna be it's going to need to be um, finalized and rendered again in Photoshop. So we don't want compression on it or anything right now. So that's why I'm choosing pre-render. <laughs> and pre-rendering also gives you the option to render this image with transparency as opposed to filling in the background with um, the white color that I have. I could keep it, I could have it be transparent, but I think I'm gonna just do, the, use the white. Okay, so render settings. As soon as I click pre-render, it puts it. We end up going to the render queue, where we have different settings, and just just focus on these three blue text links for render settings is set to best settings, output module set to to this QuickTime, and then we have um, the output to is where you name and set the location. So I'm going to start by clicking on best settings to bring up the menu just to check over that your settings are at qualities at best, resolution should be at full, and the time span that set is it's set to the work area only. Here let me cancel and just show show you what the work area is. See this bar here? This is the work area. So you could you could trim the work area however you'd like and then when you go to render you could you could uh, set your, in your settings to render only what's under the work area but my work area is stretched across the entire timeline so it really doesn't matter when I'm in my render settings if I have um, my time span of what I'm rendering set to work area only or length of composition it's the same doesn't really matter and then it'll tell me my frame rate here and it'll tell me the duration the start time code to the end time code the final duration is 10 seconds that all looks good so I could click OK or cancel because I really didn't make any changes here so I'm just gonna click cancel I'm not using any of these options here so I'm just gonna click cancel and then move on to and so this is just a quick just look over everything you want to just make sure your settings are at best and full quality and that your your um, duration looks good and everything looks good like you're rendering the entire project that you want to render okay then output module cuss well, you can click on this blue text link here 
and these are the main options. The format's going to be a QuickTime file. There are other file formats here. You might find different ones if you're on Windows. The Right here we have a post render action import and replace usage. This is if your goal is to to create a, a file, a video file, and then have it import back into your project. I'm really not interested in doing that, so um, I can just click none on that. And then down here, video output, it's set to output the colors of the pixels that you have, you know, on the objects, as well as anything that's transparent with millions of colors that all looks good and here is where you have the option to set it up so that the background will come in as transparency or as whatever color you set the background color to I set my background color to white so setting it up as matted is gonna keep retain my background color as white if I choose straight unmatted then the background color is not going to be there, it's just going to be transparency, which you might want to make a video that has retains the transparency, but I'll leave it at matted so that it will keep that white color as the background. And then you could just leave everything alone pretty much. So the only thing I did was I changed the post render action so that it's not going to re-import the video. But it's a, this is optional. You don't have to do anything here if you don't mind it re-importing your video. There's no audio on this, so it's just leaving it on auto is fine. And I'm going to say OK. And then now finally, the last, the third of the text links to click on and check over is the output to um, module here where you click on the blue text link here to get into it. And this is just naming it. It'll be a, an MOV file and also choosing where it's going to be saved. So I want it to be saved in my folder for this class. So I'm going to put it here. And it's just named the same name I named the composition. The BBG header for animation version 2 and it's saving as a QuickTime format as an MOV file, save. And then I'm just going to click render. That was fast because it's a really short video. That's really nice. Okay, I'm going to click on Photoshop here because now we need to open it in Photoshop in order to make a GIF animation. That's the final step. So then in Photoshop, you just go File, Open, and then you open the video, the MOV file, not the After Effects file. This is the, the file that you render into a video that I pre-rendered. There it is, and I'm just going to click Open. And, oh, I thought it was going to, to keep my background white, but it didn't because clearly it looks like it's got transparency. So let me do that again with different settings. Let's try that again. I'm, gonna, I'm in the render queue here. I can delete what I rendered already so it doesn't stay there by clicking the name of it, deleting. Then I'm going to go back to this version 2 here and I'm going to go file. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Okay, no, not file. I'm going to go composition, pre-render. And the settings I need to change are here at output module, custom, QuickTime. Maybe what I need to do instead of having alpha there, I need to just have it be RGB and matted is good and let's try this so I'm going to say OK there and then this one I'm going to uh, maybe name it I want this to be white BG background going here C 
save and render and we'll see if it makes this one with the white background. Then I go into Photoshop because this looks like a transparent background. So that's that one. I'm going to just try File Open or Command O and find the one with the white background. There's the one I named white background. Open. There. That's it. So because alpha refers to transparency, if you want the background color that you set, then you need to um, specify that by selecting RGB, not RGB plus alpha, because RGB plus alpha will give you all this will be transparent, which might look cool too on WordPress. But if you want to make sure you have the background color, you um, just choose RGB, not RGB plus alpha. So now we know. Okay, I got some messages in chat. Let's see what they are. Okay, Lance checking in. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finally, in order to make this into a an animation that I can put on WordPress, I need to go to a File, hover over Export. This is from Photoshop now. So you open up your, your movie file in Photoshop, just File Open or Command O, and then you go File, Export, and you choose Save for Web. This is the way I know to um, create a GIF animation. Save for web. And it should work as long as you used a low frame rate, like 12 frames per second in After Effects. Otherwise, it could, it could really crash the system and not you won't get anywhere with it. In Photoshop, it'll just keep you know, like endlessly trying to save and it will never save if you have a higher frame rate. Um, so over here in this column, you want to make sure that, that it's set as, as a GIF format. And you can leave all the defaults here. You could, you could experiment with different options, but um, it's probably going to look best with the default settings. And there, if there's no transparency in this one, so it doesn't matter if I have it checked or not. Um, it, I could have actually used the one with the transparency and then unchecked it and then just had it fill with, with this color here as my matte, this white color, or I could choose whatever color I want to fill the transparent areas. Um, convert to sRGB, that's fine. You can just leave all the defaults. And if you want it to go on a loop, you can set the looping options to forever. If I want it to not play on a loop, I can just have it uh, just do once. Just play once. And then I can click um, save. And... And that's going to go to my folder for the class here. And saving it here is my header with the white background. And save. And it should give me a GIF animation. So then I go into my WordPress account. So I go to WordPress.com. And um, and then I go to, let's go to my Bright Bloom Graphics page, and then I go to my Appearance, and I go to Customize, and then where do I go? I want to switch out my header, so I go to Header Image. Instead of the, the static header image, I can choose a different image, so I can click Add New Image. And then I can upload the file, select files, and I can choose the um, where is it? What am I looking for? Okay, here it is. 
media drive and my folder for this class and I'm looking for the one that I just created out of Photoshop that's the GIF animation. There it is. Okay, then I click open and it's coming in into WordPress. I can just name it animated header. Hopefully it works. Select and crop. It's animating here. Sometimes they, for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. But I'm gonna do skip cropping because I think maybe cro if you choose crop, it might make it not work, but we'll see. Okay, so now let's do save changes and hopefully it works. And then I'm gonna close this and try to preview it here. Visit site. Let's see if it works. Yay! It's animating! Where vision comes to life. And then it just stops. So that's... So that's one way. Is And then every time you refresh the page, it should animate in again. Or like if I move, maybe if I move somewhere different. When people come and visit my page for the first time, they should see animation. But the other option is if I go back over here to to um, Word to um, After Effects, there's my other my other he header here that was just gonna animate on a loop because it has the same beginning as it has an ending, which is nothing in this case. Then I can go f composition. These are the steps again to rendering your um, header. You go to composition, pre-render, and now this is n this is the one that's ready to go. The other one I already rendered, so I can select it and press delete. So this is the new one with the three blue text links you look for. So best settings I click on just to check over that everything's good quality and that's the full duration. That's good. I don't need to do anything there. Cancel. The next one next to output module I click on and I don't want to import it so I'll just do none. And here we decided we want if I want the background um, uh, color I could just switch out of L RGB plus alpha and just do RGB and it's set to matted and that all looks good so I say okay there and then here output 2 I click on that and it's gonna be I'm gonna call this one loop at the end of this so I know this is the one I want to play on a loop the version the other version and that's going gonna go to my folder for the class there. So this is the MOV file that I'm rendering out of After Effects. Then I choose Render. Renders it together. Wow, that was so fast. I couldn't see. I couldn't even see it. Um, but that's how fast it went. That's fine. So then I jump into Photoshop. I'm just going to close these that are open now that I don't need. Don't save. Clicking the X's, don't save. And then I can go File, Opener, Command O, and I'm choosing the new one that I just rendered that I named with the word loop at the end, because this is the one I want to play on a loop. So I could preview it and see how it's gonna play. So things are gonna come in here like that, and then I'm gonna move in 3D and leave. All right. So that's the one that I want to render next. So um, then I'm going to go from Photoshop, you export. So you go File, Export, and you choose Save for Web Legacy. And that's how you make the GIF. So that turns from Photoshop, we're turning it into a GIF animation. Because you cannot put a video file in your header. It has to be a GIF animation. So we go GIF choose GIF and leave all the default settings there and 
Then looping options, I want to set this one to forever, so this should play on a loop. And then I can click save. And make it go to my folder for the class. Save, it'll have the same name as the other file. BBEG header for animation loop gif it's a gif save and it's saving okay so now when I go to WordPress go here my sites go to appearance go to header here here's header there then I can go add new image Upload files, select file. I'm going to choose the one that plays on a loop, the GIF there. Open. And then I could name this one. I'll just put it in my alt text. Animated header loop. And then I go to select and crop. And I just can go to skip cropping. And there it is. Okay. My animated header. And then I can just do save changes. That's kind of fun. And then once it's saved, I, cl I can click the X. And I should be able to click here on my home and visit site and preview it. So now things are, are really popping in there. And it's just going to, it should continuously just keep animating. I like it. Thank you. Okay, so now we've got like not that much time but um, I wanted to show you quickly how because we're gonna start next week we're gonna start getting into YouTube so I want to show you how you might do this for a YouTube video I might start getting set up for your YouTube video so it's probably best if you do set up everything in Illustrator for your YouTube video so you can start um, in Illustrator you launch Illustrator and make a new document and choose in Illustrator for the new document choose film and video because there are lots of film and video presets that work with different um, types of standard television technology for all kinds of formats all over that will work with the technologies developed in all parts of the world we we're focused on what's going to work here in the united states for this class so um a standard format would for the united that's going to work with you display on united states technologies united states television and it's going to look good on youtube is this format here that's that's called HDV slash HDTV 1080, the 1920 by 1080 size. That's standard high definition video. They've also got much bigger formats. If you want gigantic, super high resolution images, but it's not really necessary. This is the standard that's gonna work probably all around very well with, with what you wanna do. So. We're going to go with the 1920 by 1080 high definition. We choose that and then name it. Um, let's just, you could just name it whatever your like video promo. I'm going to say BBG video promo. Promo. Uh, this is going to be for your your setup for your composition to bring into After Effects. So you can leave all the settings default as is. Notice it's the color mode is going to be RGB because we're designing for the screen. And we're going to just click create. 
So things look look different with um, when you're designing for television or for video, for video promo, that you'll see a transparency grid that looks like this. We're not used to seeing that as often in Illustrator. If you don't like that transparency grid, you can um, switch it off under view and, um, where is it? Hide transparency grid, there, hide transparency grid if you like the white. But the transparency grid is kind of helpful to see what's what's transparent versus what's actually white. It's just up to you if you want to have that. But I guess I'll leave mine white. So, um, so next I need to um, get my, I want my, I want to copy my layers here. So what I could do, since I already separated all these onto, onto their layers as I want to animate them, I could go to this header and I can just select everything one by one and, and make new layers over here. So unfortunately, it's not so easy. Although what I, another way that I could do this, instead of starting with this new document, I could do like a file and a save as and make this into a video format size. It's just another way to do it. So if you don't want to have to redo all the layers, I could do save as and then I could say, uh, put on the end of the name HD TV. So this is just another version of my Illustrator file for animation HDTV now in my going to my folder save okay so I could just alter my artboard I've got my layers already set up how I want them I just need the artboard to be different so I can select the artboard tool and then from properties in the artboard sections in the artboard section I should say once you're selected on your artboard tool under under preset you can click the drop down and you can choose there should be the high definition preset here there is an HD there it is the HDTV preset is here HDTV 1080 that's the one click on that and now it's giving me a much larger artboard. I'm going to just click the selection tool to get out of that and zoom out with command minus. So then that tells me that I need to just um, adjust my layers for this to do a new animation. So I need to um, size this differently. Scale this bar differently. Whoops. Maybe I'll select them all and hold shift and scale it bigger. Maybe I'll move these lines, select the lines, and just kind of redesign this whole thing. I'm going to hold shift and scale it. I'm just going to redesign this for my uh, video because now it's a different, a whole different size. The logo, remember logo and business name need to be scaled together. So you select the logo, hold down shift, select the business name, so, and scale them together. So I could just do this and do a whole different kind of thing with with now that I have all this space to work with, I could rethink a lot. A lot. So we're gonna be setting this up, setting up the the video frame. So this is so the nice thing about doing it this way is that um, is that my layers are already done. If I Start it like this with a format that's especially designed, like if you go file, new, and you choose 
what I did. I chose the film and video preset. You'll have, everything will be set up especially for creating for television, for film, for video, um, like I did there. And you'll have this this layout with the um, these nice guides here, the title safe guide, where you keep you keep text positioned within the title safe so it doesn't get cropped off. And then the action safe, you keep your import very important imagery like your logo. You want to have it placed within this action safe boundary. This you can start with this setup, but then that means that you need to make have all your layers. I'll bring in you need to set up all your layers over again over here I don't right now I don't have those title safe um, settings here but I think there's a way I could bring them in if I let's see if I go to the artboard tool or I think it might be in um, Go here. I'll have to look look into where maybe it's under view. Um, I'll have to look into that. Um, to because that one time I I knew where where those um, those guides were because it is handy to have them. But if, if you want this setup, that's especially for film and television, you just need to go and create layers. So you can, I can name this layer logo, for example, logo. And then I can go in, into my other, my, where my, um, where I have all my layers already s separated. I can go and make sure that everything is unlocked. See if unlock all is grayed out, then that's good, then you're ready to go. And then you can just see this layer, it only has one item on it, that's fine. You can just click the circle to select everything on that layer. See, I'm targeting that, so it's selected, and I can copy with Command C. And then I can go over here, and then I can highlight the layer and hit Command V to paste, or edit paste or edit paste in place is good because it puts it exactly in the same location from on as it was on the other artboard and then I can just make a new layer with the plus and then name the new layer something else see what's my next layer my business name layer so I can move that under and then just double click there and call it business name and you just go one by one go over here select my business name or just check that that's yeah that's the only thing there so I can hit command C to copy go over here and highlight my business name layer and it's command shift V to paste in place so you, you can do it very quickly with the keyboard shortcuts end curve here I can target that layer copy that with command C go over here make a new layer name it again end curve drag it where I want it to be underneath highlight it command shift V to paste in place so you start building the different layers maybe if I work if I work backwards though it's probably going to be easier so I don't have to keep reordering so if I work from top from bottom to top so if I so I want to select this layer this this layer has a bunch of stuff in it so I'm targeting this layer at the top level copy command C to copy on a Mac control C on Windows and I go over here and I'm gonna just make a new layer I guess I still have to reorder call it back bar press return highlight it and command shift V and there it is everything goes into the back bar layer all the different parts are there and then I need another layer called big spiral so I just click the add new layer button I double click to name it big spiral 
press return, I'm highlighted on big spiral, I go over here and I target big spiral, copy with command C, control C on windows, I highlight big spiral layer, command shift V, that would be control shift V on windows to paste in place and so on and so on till you got everything built the way you want it into the separate layers as you as you would like to have everything move separate from one another. And did someone put something in chat? I thought I saw something come up in chat or maybe I'm just imagining things. Well, I think I have a little bit more time to continue this process. Okay, so then the next thing I, is... I have uh -huh. one question. Uh-huh. Okay, when you uh, import from Illustrator to uh, After Effects, now does everything have to be on the artboard itself for it to come in? Yes, yeah, anything that's outside of the artboard will not show in After Effects when you import. It, or it'll, if you have something gotcha. hanging off the edge, it's going to be cropped off in After Effects. Yeah. Okay, so the next layer up is little circles. So I go over here I'm on, and I'm highlighted on big spiral. I can click the plus here or I could click the fly out button at the top corner of the layers and choose new layer that way. Call it little circles. Click OK. Now I'm highlighted on little circles. I jump back by clicking on the tab to get to the next document and I tar I'm targeting little circles already. I copy, Command C to copy, go into this document. I'm highlighted on little circles and then Command Shift V to paste in place. So now the little circles are there. Then I go to the over to the next document, see what's my next layer is big circles. So I need to go target the big circles. Go to over here and I'm just going to make a new layer, double click here and name it Big Circles. Click outside or press return to apply that. Big Circles has nothing on it right now, it's highlighted. Go over here to the other document by clicking the tab. Big Circles is targeted because I clicked on the circle, that means it's selecting the big circle objects. See, all of those are selected. And then I copy with Command C. I go back over here, have big circles highlighted, Shift Command V to paste. Then the next layer, dark spirals. You can target dark spirals to, to copy them. I could even just command C them now and then go over here and then I needed they're called dark spirals right so then I need to just I have big circles highlighted so that I click the plus button at the bottom of the layer panel and then I'm just gonna call this dark spirals press return to apply that while it's highlighted then I just need to do Shift Command V to paste in place. So now the dark spirals are on the dark spirals layer. Then I go back over here. The next layer up is light spiral. So I target select, copy with Command C to copy. And then I jump back into this document and I need to make a new layer. Name it, what was it? Light spirals. And then Command Shift V to paste. So light spirals are now on there. And then the last one, I think I'm up to the last one, is lines. So I target lines by clicking the circle to target select the lines. And I copy with Command C to copy. And I go jump over to this document. And then I need to make lines. So I click and I click new layer, type in lines, press return. And then while I'm highlighted on lines, I just use Command Shift V to paste the lines in. So now I've got all of my layers that I want and I'm ready to go to, to do the animation. So 
I'll do a simple animation. I'm just saving this. So this is this is one document with the this is with the HDTV preset. And that's gonna go to my folder, okay. And then the other one is the one this one is the one that I um did a save as on my header and just changed the size of the artboard to be more like a, a YouTube video size, a video format, the high definition setting. And I'm just gonna make sure that's saved. So that's already saved. So those are those are ready to go. Um, we are out of time for me to keep going and, and animate them. But we'll be ready for next week for me to do a quick uh, YouTube promo and then we'll get into launching our YouTube channel. Sound good? I can't hear you. Yes, Sound like yes, a plan? Okay. Yes, All right.